So, so anything happening this week? Today is August 22, 2018. Yes. And uh, what's happening this week? PyCon. PyCon is happening this week. Yes. And it's stressful. When is it again? Yeah. This Friday, right? It's Saturday. Uh, Saturday. Conference on weekend. It's a tradition. Mm-hmm. Mm. We just have pro and con, but that's another story altogether. Mm. And next week, we will have Madeka. It's the Madeka week. So that one, we actually have one event happening. Uh, Sina Project had a code screen for one of the co- uh, infrastructure. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to fix one of the code because uh, because everyone is on volunteer mode. So we will try to get uh, this. Is, uh, uh, can, next can we stop a bit? Like, uh, wait a bit. Because OBS what? decided to Long. update again. <laughs> <laughs> well, the stream is still ongoing. Yeah, because, is the stream on? because I'm, I'm not trying to re- let it restart. Oh, okay. Uh, let me check. Okay, uh, it's still on. Okay, it's still on. All right, All right mm-hmm. so yeah. I managed uh, to stop it. Next week in Madeka Day, we will have a code screen for Sina Project. It will be a beginning of a series of screen to fix our code and whatever that we need. And also this, some community engagement. This is a Sina Project, right? Correct, correct. Yeah. Uh, of course, next week, uh, is our, uh, we will try to fix our... Okay, I'm with the Sina Project, which is why I use the word our. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we will uh, fix Sina Project's people and people's API. Uh, some of the search function is data broken. Uh, that's next week. And we'll be using Python and Django because that's what is written since the beginning. Mm-hmm. Then we will uh, then we the Sina project team. Uh, we have another spring uh, soon ish after next week uh, to deploy the street uh, street reporting system. I fix my street. So that's the closest event we have right now. So anyone knows any event that is not covered last week? Not that I know of. Uh, not covered as in, okay, like we didn't talk about it. Okay, okay I'll, I'll paste it. it. Uh, I just shared the new link, so you guys should uh, actually. Sh- that's a live link, which is uh, persisted over the channel. This is basically our channel link. Uh huh. So apparently the event link didn't work because we missed the timeline. Okay. 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 So right. we're we're the live link is working because yeah. I'm watching it right now. Okay. And as you can see, we're still new at doing this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, cool. Think... Yeah. So PyCon, Sinner Project, anything else that we have uh, this coming week until the Wednesday? Uh, what is happening this weekend? I forgot. There's something happening this weekend. PyCon. Well, I, I yeah, guess PyCon is happening this I just want to give the iOS meetup a shout out because I didn't do that on the Sunday <laughs> episode. Yeah, it, yeah, was, it, it was on Monday. So it's like it's happening like day after and I, 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 I wasn't aware of it until like after we closed the stream. So yeah, there was an iOS meetup. <laughs> uh, after so, the fact, right? After the okay. fact. Yeah. Third Monday of the week. Yeah. Uh, so the month. Starting this week, I think uh, the team uh, could be me. I will be asking different community to actually share their schedule. Mm. Cool. They actually do shout out on the channel. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Golang meetup is happening this next week, Chilo? Yeah, I, I, I actually haven't posted it. <laughs> so I yeah. should actually confirm that like by today. Okay. Mm. Yeah, cool. Really and uh, I, saw, I saw that uh, Golang now has a call for proposals. Uh, it's, been, for it's been there speaking since up. Uh, early this year. And also for mm-hmm. uh, the Python user group. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah, but so, uh, any... so far there's a zero and three. <laughs> That. <laughs> Nobody wants to speak on Go. Everyone wants to listen. Yeah. <laughs> it's a that common means, theme uh, here in Malaysia, though. <laughs> yeah, everyone wants to listen. Yes. All right. That's I think <laughs> any announcement before we move on? I think that's good. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So I I was on the with a scrum with some of the team members in my company, and we were talking about all of these credits and digital money and. It's good that some people spoke saying that we might need to consult lawyers on this because it's digital money. We want we need to uh, discuss about also the ethical impacts of what actually we're trying to do, and that actually got me to thinking: uh, what is it about software developers and ethics? Because if you remember, in 2015 there was this uh, case with Volkswagen where they were caught in the EU. Uh, 
falsifying their emissions tests. So basically, if you're in the uh, you're in the track where you're supposed to be the the car is being tested for emissions, the software mm -hmm. will switch to the uh, EU friendly uh, mode where it will pass emissions. But if it knows that you're not being tested or the car is not being tested, that then you actually don't do fuel efficient mode or the you, you'll fail the test and they, they got uh, they got caught they got fined and in one of the transcripts of the the hearings they the ceo mentioned that uh software developers put it there and i would i would agree that a software developer definitely put it there and so i wanted to uh bring up the point that what is uh what is it about uh like, what are there anything? Is there anything that's preventing software developers from put like saying no to unethical uh, requests by your employer? Like, yeah. have you? No. Yeah. Well, I have been approached to do some gambling, you know, mm -hmm. like bookie system before. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> why don't we tell about those uh, experiences? Because for me, the oh. probably the most the, the closest I uh, request I got when I was still working as a Java developer in the Philippines was so I I designed this uh, application. We had SMS before. It was uh, uh, it's you, you send a number, you send uh, keywords to a, a short code like two zero zero three, and then it will reply, and then you basically interact with your application. That was like in the uh, late two thousands, and that was for betting on race horses and that time i didn't actually know if it was there was actually a race horse uh that comes back from the api i just basically what what i was just doing is that parsing the api which horse won and then just forwarding it to the to the user so that's probably the the closest i got to having an ethical question does anyone here had a had something similar so in a bank they tend to the the so one of my first job, no my first job is actually in in, in a test center for standard charter and there's a reason why they set up a test center mm -hmm. it's a bank and they actually need it to test uh, the reliability of software unfortunately you might thought that a bank might use safety feature like uh formal methods and all that right not actually true, except for I think the Singapore team do it. But how do they mitigate that? They actually by having tests. Unfortunately, the way we do software is here's my opinion. The way we do build software is essentially uh, is very compartmentalized, uh, very compartmentalized, and we usually just receive and mm -hmm. do it. So we we get a task from whoever's asking us to do something, and then we just do it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I've been receiving set. Uh, one of my job is setting up a uh, video streaming infrastructure for some dodgy activity. But let's say because I know the guy, I don't want to say what what kind of activity. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> video streaming <laughs> and <laughs> dodgy activity. <laughs> <laughs> up Connect hardware. the dots. Connect the dots. Uh, setting up those hardware by default is well legal. It's a streaming software, and streaming software can actually do anything like. What we're doing or streaming video for friend and all that so that uh is actually reasonable by default uh things that we do is actually very innocent if you look at it individually but the thing is our industry our industry is very interesting okay mm -hmm. uh a construction need to be verified by a civil engineer mm -hmm. yeah correct yeah but but when a building, when a building cra uh, crash down, um, lands off or whatever, is the engineer that signs off that a liable yeah. owner, right? Mm -hmm. uh, software, but, but uh, let, let's go back further. Uh, the people that are not get sued are the workers, the machine companies, uh, the machine companies, the contractors. Maybe the contractor that built the particular part, but not other contractor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, software industry is essentially like this. Mm -hmm. uh, often we are built in silos. By by rank, we are pretty much like construction workers. Yeah. Right? Assembly line. And, 
Mm. Correct. Even though we are not exactly construction workers, we are creative workers. But by rank and position, we are pretty much in there, and we work on different level of. Uh, we are working on different thing, and each of it can be very innocent. Mm. So. So are you are you making the argument that we are basically tools? So it's not the gun that kills, but the person who fires it, something like that. <laughs> um, no, it's yes and no. This is actually one level. The level, uh, so the point of that story right now is often the type of project that we do is very innocent, so mm-hmm. we can't o- be always be liable, liable to bad practices, mm-hmm. unless we directly involved. Mm-hmm. But software industry do not require sign off. We require to de- implement feature. Mm-hmm. So you do not have to implement feature, but in reality, oh. that is not true. Why power structure? But that's my mm-hmm. opinion. Mm-hmm. So often, uh, the question you asked just now is, what stopped us from saying no? The answer is yeah. nothing, stopped, nothing stopped us from saying no, other than the fact that we would get fired. Well, but that's, that's a big demotivation to say no, right? Yeah. Well, no, no, the, um, yeah. because for a long time, software developers are not get, getting sued until unless they're directly involved in hacking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What well, What do you think, Jimmy and Chi Leong? Um, I I could draw some uh points from that the uh, you know bookie side job that I I was approached to do like way back. Mm-hmm. Uh, that time the guy who approached me he basically explain this loophole in the system where it's kind of the same thing like how an engineer sign off something and therefore it's the engineers or the senior engineer that sign off the project liable. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the one who's liable. It's, in this case, it's like uh, depending on where the server or the site is hosted, uh, the laws that applies will be following uh, the laws uh, where, from where the server resides instead of like... Mm-hmm where the where the service uh serves so even though it's uh you know serving malaysian clients and 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 gambling online gambling illegal here uh but as long as it's it's somewhere that is legal that is fine uh so that was loophole um i didn't do it (laughs) uh Mm -hmm. i it's not like i have a very clear good conscience or something like that i i think i was a bit uh, cautious, but uh, the main reason is that I, I I don't think I can do it like back then. It it actually requires some very uh very sophisticated uh uh I'd say uh asynchronous programming. So the thing about bookie sites is that uh your 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 um what's the thing called the uh the the batting number or what's it called again? Mm-hmm. The probability. The uh, no. There's a word for it. I can't remember. So okay. Think of, uh, it's like the betting uh, scale, or uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's like uh, how much you win per uh, per game or something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So depending on the game, you get different uh, 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 scale per se, and then because different teams, different players, and things like that. And different bookies will have different rates. So mm-hmm. if you update your site a, bit, a little bit slower, uh, you are susceptible to be you know, gamed uh, by other bookie sites. So it's like, okay, you have to, you have to uh, write a pretty uh, high availability uh, site that uh, you know, is fast enough so that your, 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 uh, your yeah, the, 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 the number you bet on or the scale that you bet on mm-hmm. is accurate enough so that it won't lose you money. So again, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's... <laughs> uh, so, but, but if, for example, this same person offers you now with more, because now you have uh, mm-hmm. more experience, you know how to do it now. Mm-hmm. Like, what, where are your, where, where would you draw the ethical line? Um, well, I, I think this is personal... Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, I uh, because I don't think I would do it uh, mm-hmm. just because of my personal belief. Uh, but again, if you are talking about uh, 
ethical uh, uh, behavior, or ethical, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, of uh, what an engineer can do, uh, it's more or less up to you personally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's actually a personal thing because yeah. you want to you look at ethics. People can have different level of. Uh, people's moral compass is actually different between different people. Yeah. Uh, for it's me, more... I don't think uh, gambling is wrong. Just that as long as it doesn't involve kids and stuff, mm. but I wouldn't actually accept that kind of project myself. But mm. I don't find it's anything problematic. Like, it's, for me, it's mm. a it's a, a way. A different kind of a uh, taxation system. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean the thing is, uh, the syndicate that run those are usually quite dodgy. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But what I'm worried about is uh, the similar to the Volkswagen one, which uh, I used to have a bit of experience working with, where it involved uh, academics um, uh, trying to ask us to manipulate the result of the machine from the mm-hmm. instrumentation. So, mm-hmm. like this kind of a uh, like yeah it, it might not cause any harm to anybody but in the short run but uh like did we i mean my, my question is did i like by doing this enable them mm-hmm. uh this kind of uh, mm. uh engineers with uh questionable ethics to graduate and be the authorities of is in within this field mm-hmm. so, uh, also- the type of software that we do is actually very riskless. We don't mm. have, I can say for sure, most of us here do not have chance to work with critical system. Well, not not necessarily. If you've uh. been working with uh, GDPR, that's already something, right? Okay. Like, are you putting in enough, uh, enough processes in your system so that not just any developer or employee has access and can actually read customer data because it's a privacy thing yes that's already very uh very close to what we're doing last year last year this is not an issue it goes back to mm-hmm. the problem it takes it's not a problem until it enforced into law mm. so yeah because right now what we can do is we can just say oh yeah we're, we're gdpr compliant and it's up yes. to the per again it's up to the personal developers ethics or ethical uh inclinations to just not look at customer data but there are not actually real uh, access audit laws or any kind of preventions. And what uh, from I, I've been reading about that and uh, Uncle Bob from uh, the Solid uh, Framework uh, Java guy, he's, uh, he writes a lot on, on, the, on articles. He mentioned that if, uh, if doctors, engineers or accountants, they have a code of ethics, and why don't software engineers also have a code of ethics? Well, uh, one of the story for computing professional bill. Do you know computing professional bill twenty fourteen? Uh no, sorry, I haven't. What uh, is that? Read that. Yeah, you might want to read first computing about computing professional bill twenty fourteen. Yeah. Uh, you just okay. So, uh, the computing professional bill twenty fourteen is actually a bill proposed to have computing professionals, i.e., software developer. To, to actually to work similarly as engineers and other professional organization. So you mean a licensing uh, thing? You it's have about to be licensing. licensed. Uh, mm-hmm. It's cause a big deal because what happened is they shift the blade, they shift the issue to training and uh, so that only university student or people, uh, certain people need to have different tier of uh, tests to actually test for, uh, to join, uh, to actually join this group to be licensed to be licensed to to work with critical uh, mm. critical software in this case uh, the critical software definition is actually very vague so any government run software i.e website mm. can be critical mm. mm-hmm. so but uh there's two reasons why it got opposed one the law is very bad and second we just so the moment is actually very cool in a way that the barrier entry is very low so and often a project can be done with one person right so uh and for construction industry uh a room a small closet you don't actually need certification and all that to sign off often i don't think so it's uh but that is like a one person job sometimes sometimes two 
But software development is like you can have one person that build the whole building. Mm-hmm. That's the analogy. Yeah, because uh, the barrier to going is very low, and the thing we build can be very big in scope, and you do not need a lot of people. Uh, so what? Uh, so why I tell you that is uh, one another reason why people are against the competing professional build is also the status quo. It changes the status quo directly. So individual ca- that is not educated. That is very hard for them to get license. Mm-hmm. Are not able to build the type of project that we can do right now. What I understand is uh, also it became illegal to practice if you don't have the license. It's just like doctors, mm-hmm. yes. so you uh, mm-hmm. you can be imprisoned just for writing software without a license. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that is bad law. I think this one is- of the stuff mm-hmm. is uh, where concern is the execution. They choose yeah. a very small party of people to represent the whole field, and yeah. they yeah. didn't rec. Uh, like, of course, uh, for on my part, I actually prefer to to standardize this. But those people that uh, cert- I mean, supposed to be certifying us and stuff needs to be updated as well. Oh yeah, mm. so that is actually uh, one of the role of setting up an organization, a certifying body. Huh. So almost all engineers and lawyers actually had a certifying body. So mm-hmm. uh, for lawyers, the bar require you to pass CLP to be licensed mm-hmm. as a lawyer. Those are mm-hmm. involved tests and all that. Engineers need to, to have certain tests to pass as well. Mm-hmm. Software develop and engineers they are relatively well why but they're relatively focused. Uh, civil engineer is on building, mining engineer on mining, right? Yeah. Software development we don't have that kind of classification. Mm-hmm. We, uh, any time, uh, any of us that have no experience in machine learning can actually pick up machine learning and practice machine learning right now. And that's uh, to turn to formalize a profession as a body, make it harder. Meaning you can only practice things that you are not certified mm-hmm. with behind the scene. Yeah, actually, but that's what I worry about setting up organization mm-hmm. and. To have a sign off by an engineer and all that usually means require an engine uh uh require a law to check an organization to have a group of certified people to sign off on the project mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh i it's isn't it a both a blessing and a curse to just yeah. just have for example someone knowing uh just learning happen to learn how to do machine learning doing a startup and uh, creating jobs because of that but at the same so that's a blessing because it's so so much fast you can so much faster you can just learn it and then uh, implement it but also a curse because uh, how do you know that this person actually understood what the models they're doing and then whatever it is that you're creating are you uh, accidentally building in racism for example into those uh, AI uh, learning models that you were doing and what Uncle Bob was saying is that the more that these things that it becomes obvious that software developers are the, the entry is so much easier that anyone can do it that it's also so much easier for the bad elements to come and enter the profession the more that governments are likely to introduce regulation such as what you were talking about uh, the malaysian bill of 2014 mm. computer professionals because mm. this is what this is exactly what government does they yeah. it creates regulation to protect its citizens and if the software development field post starts posing uh, a danger to uh, the citizens because of bad software in general or unethical software that like the Volkswagen controversy for example or uh, Google trying to enter China and doing custom uh, what do you call this monitoring stuff privacy related stuff on over there then the more that governments will try to protect itself through the only thing that it knows how to do which is uh, creating laws and regulation and actually, i don't know if yeah. that's good or bad i mean i, I, I that's I, actually I, a very good question actually hmm. uh, sorry, yeah Jimmy, was oh, so much, i mean the thing sorry. is when we talk about organization company-wise or state-wise uh the we all have different agendas so like for example the state will protect its uh, citizens uh, mm-hmm. by introducing laws and also companies would definitely not want to uh, you know get into any trouble say for example uh, uh, 
conforming to the GDPR, for example. Uh, so, uh, but like those are usually handled by introducing like, uh, you know, NDAs, uh, 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 any 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 kind of uh, um, uh, reg uh, regulating the, the 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 people that have access to it. Uh, uh, you know, proper audit on their their their, their laptops and everything. The, 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 there are uh, ways to achieve that uh, by standardization. So not just regulations, but mm -hmm. I guess when it comes to ethics, uh, uh, I, 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 I see it more like uh, on the uh, professional level uh, or mm -hmm. to me as a personal level thing. So because mm -hmm. when I look at the, the, the profession that we are doing, uh, uh, either we learn programming through like our university college or you learn it through like uh, you know going through tutorials and things like that we do uh, I, I do consider ourselves as craftsmen and I mm -hmm. think there is a pride that needs to be attached to that so uh, and if you think that that uh, I mean if I, I think that if uh, I mean it, it, it even boils down to the fact that you know you shouldn't write code that is shitty and then you yeah. leave the company and then uh you know you pass that shitty code mm -hmm. to somebody else that's ethics you know like yeah. to me, it's, it doesn't even need to be that big as in like something that is uh, uh touching like uh legal stuff mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. actually there's a, there's a best thing that happened throughout history of server development uh sql injection is so common almost no web framework nowadays doesn't come with protection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Notice that? Yeah. There is like, because it's so bad, they have to implement, even PHP had a default library for the handle database that protects you from that. Yeah. Right? Uh, web, good web framework have some good default for security. Mm -hmm. So, software development is very, so the best thing happening right now is for practices, if we can encode it in the framework, it will become a practice. And that actually happened in software development. Mm -hmm. You already see that in open source. Uh, open source is common, but software, and there's people that audit open source software because it's important and they mm -hmm. accept it. Uh, we have a lot of practices. Uh, we have responsible disclosures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have libraries that protect us. Mm -hmm. So, and there is a whole set of work on machine learning library that try to test biases. Mm -hmm. So that's the best thing about software development. Uh, traditional industry requires inspection and all that. Software development, it's relatively easy. We can, we can add protection since the beginning very easily, relatively easily. Mm -hmm. So it's as if we have a seat belt for our program since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And everybody can just import and use it. I see. So yeah, that's like that. that's the thing. Like, uh, for 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 anybody new that just got into software development, they could just pick up frameworks and everything that uh is done to to you know achieve those things comes with comes with the framework. So, yeah. well, it does it does prevent mistakes. Yeah, but it does. then again, for like it doesn't solve soft problems. Yeah. Well, it doesn't solve like a decision to actually cause harm mm. all right yeah which is like but, the, the thing that's uh i mean how like uh, for so so this is like a, a very self-regulating thing right which is great yeah. because uh, i think we need more self-regulation we need more people to remind each other that hey we should not do do bad things but uh where where does again where where does one draw the line you mentioned that uh, bequeathing code bad code to your colleagues when you leave is unethical and some people won't draw the line there some people will actually draw the line where it's already borderline illegal that is already unethical mm. uh, Chile, i see chileong uh like uh nodding <laughs> a lot like he's uh, <laughs> agreeing a he's, lot with what's the he's thing he's been cleaning a lot of <laughs> decode from other people is it yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is it doesn't stop sorry, people from calm. like yeah from causing especially the cause of causing harm but how far can you go? Like how how deep does the system yeah. like? If your library mm -hmm. is used by somebody to do probably something like a yeah like child trafficking site, uh, that, do you feel? Mm. I mean, how mm -hmm. far does it 
I mean, that's how far does it go? I mean, I mean, not as far. I mean, not to go as far as child trafficking, but uh, have you, you guys heard of Popcorn, popcorn Time? Yeah. The streaming, uh, open source streaming, uh, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. platform that can stream directly from yeah. torrent. So, like, it was kind of like banned by the I don't know U.S. government or some some regulation banned them, and they just repackaged it into an open source system uh, and gutted the. Uh, the uh, illegal stuff, which is just basically the, which is technically just the uh, the torrents for like copyrighted movies. So it's still streaming. It, it's still serving those non copyrighted service, but at the back you can always just drop those torrent in, and you can just use the same thing. So uh, is it ethical? Like, uh, is it ethical to just op- like like uh, open source the yeah. thing that enables that? You know, I think it's some, the use. some people. Because, so, yeah, so it is the use. So uh, you need to look at the right use. So in this case, remember the building I'm talking about. Mm. So usually it's the people that works directly on the project, and usually it's the head of the project that be that be responsible. But okay, so it's a very simple scenario, right? Uh, your project had a security incident. Okay. The project is a had a security incident. Mm-hmm. What caused it? Think about it for a while. It can either be a mistake or something consciously, uh, a consciously introduced backdoor. Okay, now, as a as let let us go further. Uh, as you build a project, uh, is auditing is security audit mm-hmm. a par- priority. Mm. In, uh, most of our project. Mm. Yeah, well, it depends yeah. on the person who's managing your project and how it's not. I how think it you go, can, goes well, down that, to the intent. Yeah, it's not the mm-hmm. like if you purposely but, do it, then yeah, you. Yeah, it's yeah. the intent that that matters. Yeah, but but uh, right. swimming actually got this uh this interesting thing that where we are usually in the position to influence the project, saying, hey, uh, we need to do a security audit, and the, is it up to us in our sense of ethics to actually convince our project manager, hey, we need to have a security audit because we are not experts at security. Or we just let the project manager say, oh, uh, it's fine. We're only like at 5,000 people per, per month anyway. It's not, nobody's going to hack us. Nobody's going to get customer data from us. <laughs> and they just leave it there, Until right? Until it happens, right? Until it happens. A common practice right now, believe it or not. That's actually a yeah. common practice. Yeah. The but yeah, so so that's the, yeah. yeah, so that's the thing. What is the intention of you on that particular uh, point in time when you had the ability to influence whether the security audit gets prioritized or not? Like mm-hmm. that can be something small or innocent, but again, the, yeah, the question there it's a very difficult question. As as usual, all ethics questions are uh, difficult. Mm-hmm. Like, where do you draw the line between what is ethical and what's not? So often we almost always draw draw the line at cost, mm-hmm. and obviously according to the law, mm-hmm. you, the law okay. requires you to you have security audit uh, mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. your credit card information. Then obviously yeah. you have to adhere to that. Mm-hmm. But above that, uh, I don't think there is uh, any like. Uh, that is not like uh, that. That doesn't like originate from uh, uh, the 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 need for like uh, to protect some sensitive data. So, uh, I mean, it depends on your app, I guess. Mm-hmm. But it used to be passwords are not that sensitive. Think about it. Mm, yeah. Then yeah. Discover that Plain text still, right? <laughs> yes. As a result, well, well, yeah, uh, But is it isn't that so? Isn't that solved by education? Like right now, it's less of a problem because all almost all tutorials will tell you to how to hash a password properly. Whereas before, like a, a decade ago, it's just okay. You save save it in a, 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 a database, like and that's how you do pressure, it, right? If you mm-hmm. fail to, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. let's say you have a blog post, a tutorial, and you forget to mention like how 
how to like properly store your password and stuff you get a lot mm. of uh, community backslash yeah it's kind of yeah. self-regulating ecosystem on its own mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the uh, one of the concern about uh from a lot of uh, non-technical people especially the politicians is that <laughs> Negligence in because of the ease of access, neg negligence even though in a very minor scale, like everybody can pick up programming, but they yeah. a simple mistake can cause a lot of harm. Mm -hmm. I think that's what uh, most people are. I mean, most of the non-tech people are concerned about. Uh, yes. So another good example is credit card number. Mm -hmm. I know we had a practice of storing credit card number and all that, but not too long ago. The site that store credit card are not really that secure. <laughs> yeah, I think it's actually. Um, to look at even earlier on when Amazon gets started, everything is encoded on the get request mm -hmm. get parameter. Mm. As a and result, that means it. it's on the logs as well on yeah. your logs yeah. because all get requests are yes. logged on the proxies so, on everything. Often, mm -hmm. uh, security are not the first thing, if, and often the practice are built along the way until uh, when people when people fail the, but the thing is we just don't have the engineering culture which is why i don't call myself a software engineer mm -hmm. uh, why i bring the fact that uh, our software engineer is not real engineering my mm -hmm. argument is they don't have the practice of we don't always we do not always have a practice of making sure Failure are not repeated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, sir, think There's about a checklist the checklist in a normal, normal engineering way, supposedly. Mm -hmm. Correct. Think about your retrospective. <clears throat> How often do your retrospective turn into a ticket to stop you from doing the same thing from your mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. your future project? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you actually encode that practice into your deployment setup or Correct. something like that, right? To make sure it happens. Or set up as a as a or put it as a manual mm -hmm. manual or yeah. checklist to be for QAA for manual testing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Good point. the practice that we don't have. So I'm not saying that all issues are equivalent to an air crash where mm -hmm. investigator mm -hmm. go in and encode that for all airplane. I'm saying something simpler. Security are security are the very few exception where we encode best practices. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. hashing library is that those are one of those very specialized thing. But think about things like uh, when you do manual testing, do people test against rule that say uh, PCA is not PCA compliant? Need to redo and all that. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's so my concern. You want to look at practice? Our practice is just not there. Yep, yep. Or uh, you want to look at something funny? I'm sorry, I'm being particular with our industry. But <laughs> no, it's so good. It, it's uh, that's the point of the 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 question. I wanted a heavy topic for our second uh, <laughs> second show, so oh. that yeah, to make it a little lighter, uh, I suggest you look at XKCD twenty thirty. Mm -hmm. It's called voting software. Voting. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Randall also had the same, uh, well, denigrating comments about the software industry which is like a tongue-in-cheek sarcastic sarcastic but also it, slightly true uh yes. commentary on the state extreme. of software development it's a little extreme but he's not mm. wrong he's not 100 yeah. percent wrong yeah that, that's what makes a good joke it's rooted yeah. in reality mm. yeah yes yeah. So, yeah sorry for introducing a really heavy topic again there are no uh i don't think there are any proper answers to it i just wanted to open the discussion and for anyone who's listening right now as well to the show or uh, listening it on the replay i what do you think like where do you draw the line that's basically the question right what uh, about the ethics and we'll see yep. it's a it's a very again if we don't do like what uncle bob was saying if we don't do it ourselves and self-regulate the the government will regulate for yeah. us and yeah they tried already on 2014 Mm -hmm. um there was a backlash they but again if since... well yeah because if because again if people keep on making the same mistakes yeah. and we're still not learning from our own mistakes then that's that's how the government protects itself or protects its people yeah mm -hmm. yeah
but ethics is always a tough problem. I got feeling mm. we're going to revisit it again and again. Yeah. Mm. But you know what? Leave comment. We want to know. Mm. It's a long yeah. one. Yeah. Yes. And we have a long show today yeah. because of technical <laughs> difficulties. And, you know, so we added a bonus. Yeah. I'm going to you know, yeah, I'm gonna re-upload this afterwards. That's what okay. So you will have you will see a less annoying version of this talk. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it, I think it's a little late right now. I need to wake up early tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a long so day for me as well. We oh. show? So. Yeah. Uh, do we have any comments from the previous show or no? No. 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 Okay. Yeah. So a few of comments from outside channel is people want to know when is our next show and what the topic is about. The answer is we do not know what we're going to talk about next week. I think uh, <laughs> one of the suggestions is uh, p- pretty close to us is uh, physical and mental health. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, physical and mental health. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, okay. So, uh, Swimming just set up a Trello board that's public, right? No, it's With, not public. Uh, it's it not is. Public? It is. Well, I, I, I guess now. Public. Yeah. Okay. Which is public. I think we'll just share the, the link somewhere. It's and Trello. You can take a look. Slash death Kami, I think. But okay. you know what? Uh, we will share the link to our user channel on yeah. YouTube. Ah, okay. And then you'll see all of the suggested stuff there, and like moving things around until it actually gets like okay, this is what we're going to be discussing on the, the next podcast, mm-hmm. and that 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 should give you so uh, give you some awareness of what we're trying to uh, talk about as regarding the schedule. Uh, it's still the same. We we live stream from Sunday to Wednesday. And we upload on Wednesday, depending on the people's schedule, because we don't we don't have a, any set schedule yet for streaming, right? Yes, we don't. Yeah, we try to do it on Sunday as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. this is an exception, Sunday. except for today, yes, <laughs> which yeah. is on a Wednesday. Okay. So I think with that, we hope to see you next week, yeah. or maybe earlier, because I think we I might do some interview for during PyCon Malaysia. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Mm-hmm. 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 Cool. Yeah. yeah. Any, again, any suggestions, yeah. just send a comment. Yeah. And yeah, see you again next week. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.